It is Friday, November 20th, 2009. We're going to be live here for the next four hours. And we're simulcasting from the very beginning of the radio show at PrisonPlanet.tv and Living uh, Living Color. Why am I doing that today? Because we've got the infomercial king and so much more, the alternative uh, medicine king. I I mean, you name it, Uh, Kevin Trudeau. People in the office when he's been walking around this morning are just standing there with their mouths hanging open. He's with us in studio for the first hour because that was the only hour he could do. He's uh, meeting with some scientists and researchers uh, here in Austin as he travels around the country and the world uh, investigating uh, alternative uh, treatments and cures. So he's here with us in studio. He has won his appeal against the federal government, a big victory for free speech because he's one of the few Americans to ever have his books banned and to have his free speech banned by a federal court. And, of course, they lost because we are saving this republic before it completely falls. So we're going to talk about the food supply, vaccines, gold, the inside info he has on that front, uh, how he won his appeal, and where Kevin Trudeau is going uh, from here, and some of the amazing um, medical uh, information that he's been discovering in his world uh, travels. Then we've got Neil Fallon, the lead singer and guitarist for Clutch. A lot of listeners of ours are fans. I'm a fan. Their lyrics are totally anti-New World Order. Uh, of course, uh, we know that Megadeth just named their new album after Endgame. We had Dave Mustaine on to talk about that. So the culture war is on, and it's not left or right. It's about liberty versus tyranny. And then Bob Chapman with his once-a-week visit with us on the economy, certainly an important uh, discussion we're going to be having today. And I got some bad news for you. The good news is Kevin Trudeau's here. The bad news, we told you, Senate health vote set for Saturday night. The debate starts. They can pass it any time next week. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the criminal bankers hijacking another 17th uh, percent of the U.S. economy. Kevin Trudeau, thanks for being here with us. Hey, my pleasure to be here. It's good to have you. Uh, we're about to go to break, but in the two minutes we've got left, tell folks about some of the info you're going to be sharing with us today. Well, the first thing is I, I have been really the first guy that the federal government said we want to take away his First Amendment rights. And they went to the judge and said we want his books banned. This is what the federal government, the Federal Trade Commission, and the reason why they're trying to ban the books and they actually got the judge to to take me off television, radio, and the Internet, I could not, I can't exercise my First Amendment rights for three years, was because 50 million people have purchased my books where I exposed the corruption in government and the drug companies, the banking industry, and the fast food industry, and how it all works together with the media. The good news is I won the appeal. The uh, appeals court vacated the $37 million fine that the judge threw on me. And they vacated the three-year ban. But now we're back in court, and now the Federal Trade Commission is asking the judge in their papers, we want the First Amendment rights for Kevin Trudeau taken away for life. Wow. And it's uh, it's really amazing. So I'll be fighting that for probably the next year. But when you say you're the first person in modern history, I, I guess some of that happened during World War One with the Trading with the Enemy Act, to say, silence this guy, and, and I've read their uh, court filings, it's been all over the national news the last few years, for listeners that don't know, where they really say you are enemy number one and must be shut down because they know if they can knock off the king uh, of alternative information on television, then they can go after everybody else. And what it does is it scares everybody else. Because of the attacks on me, I don't mind the fight. And luckily, I've had the financing to spend the, you know, virtually tens of millions of dollars over the years fighting them. But everybody else in the industry is just scared like rabbits. So they, they are, are, are going back into their hole. So the, the government is using this to scare everybody else and stop them from doing. But they won't go after Pfizer. I mean, Pfizer was fined criminally four times, four times, and recently just fined $2.7 billion for criminal fraud in the marketing of their drugs. That's not front page news. No one even talks about it. They were fined four times for criminal fraud. But guess what? Not a single person at Pfizer was charged. Let's go over your case and how important this is for the First Amendment. Whether you love Kevin Trudeau or hate him, and I happen to like him, you've got to ask yourself, why is the government and the media so so angry with this person? And we'll discuss all that on the other side of this quick break. November 20th, 2009, we have Kevin Trudeau. In studio. And, you know, it's hard to put this guy in a box and really say what he is. He's done so much. Author, lecturer, uh, you know, top infomercial guy on television. And he has raised the ire of the federal government. They said, you can't sell your books. You can't go on radio. You can't go on TV. You have no First Amendment. 
Well, he didn't back off. He's still gone on radio and television. He came on this radio show, and now he has beaten them with his appeal in court because it was so flagrantly unconstitutional. And, he, again, whether you agree with everything Kevin says or agree with some of it or agree with a little bit of it or all of it, all of us either hang together or hang separate, as Benjamin Franklin said, when the government and the media team up to come demonize somebody and say we must crucify them, we must shut them down, we must openly persecute them, we must give them $25 million or $27 million fines, we have a problem. Look at Merck knowingly putting out Vioxx, knowing it would cause heart attacks. Look at Merck with the Gardasil shots in their own trials, knowing it was causing autoimmune diseases and killing people. Now confirmed mainstream news, we told you three years ago during the trials. In 1981, Eli Lilly and Prozac, they knew massive increases in suicide, psychotic breaks, homicidal mania. Now it's on the inserts, 20-something years later, 19 years later, they've been forced to put it on the inserts. So you have these big drug giants that want a monopoly, and Kevin Trudeau's writing books about well-known alternative treatments and cures that are known in Europe and Asia, and he's being demonized as the ultimate uh, snake oil salesman, when I've read a lot of his books, I haven't seen all his material, but a lot of it really looks you know, legitimate from what medical doctors and others have said on this show. But regardless, even if he was wrong, he has a First Amendment right. If Kevin Trudeau uh, is successfully destroyed by these people, everyone else is next. Obama's openly announcing he wants to regulate and shut down the web for national security. They're openly announcing they want to federalize all your local police. The power structure, the big Fortune 100, want to consolidate the markets. They want to shut down freedom of choice. And that's why Kevin Trudeau is here today, really on a crusade to fight this, because he's one of the only people that's had the money to go after these people. And he's one of the only people I've ever heard of in the last century who's actually had his books banned in the United States. We're going to talk about it all today. Uh, Kevin, when we hit that break, you were starting to get into the criminal activity. I mean, Bayer knowingly shipping out over a million uh, ampules of Factor Eight, knowing it had HIV and uh, hepatitis in it. But they're not getting in trouble. It's you because you're saying vitamin C is good. Exactly. When I, when I first did this, I mentioned last time I was on the show when I was calling it from Germany, Sean Shanahan had hooked on phonics in 1989, teaching kids how to read because the school systems were pulling phonics out of the schools. I introduced Mega Memory, and I exposed that the Department of Education was getting school systems to get the kids on the drug Ritalin, and they were giving $500 a month per kid who was on Ritalin. And I said, they're drugging the kids on purpose. The school system's drugging the kids on purpose. And I remember watching that when I was in college. That's why you've been enemy number one all along, because you immediately went after their drug into the kids. And I see, people don't understand. I got the phone call. The phone call was, we need to have a meeting from the Federal Trade Commission, and they said, you have to stop talking about Ritalin. That was a one-on-one -on -one meeting, and I said, that's the point of the Mega Memory Program. Sure, it improves your memory, but I'm exposing the drug Ritalin, and, they, and I, I will not back down. And they said to me, we, we will not back down either. They sued Sean Shanahan with Hooked on Phonics, bankrupted him. They sued me. I fought back basically won that but then they've been on a crusade ever since to demonize me as the messenger but they never said that the mega memory program for example didn't work they never said that there are customers who bought mega memory and didn't get a refund and then when it came out natural cures they don't want you to know about that book which was number one on the new york times bestseller list 26 weeks in a row in 2004 it was the number one selling book in america it outsold harry potter it outsold uh, uh the da vinci code when I came out with that book, I exposed how the pharmaceutical companies were basically fraudulently lying to people about the research, uh, about the efficacy and safety of their drugs. Now, what just came out yesterday, that the, that the pharmaceutical companies write these letters saying how good a drug is. They go to the uh, doctors at the medical schools, the PhDs, and say, sign this letter, make believe it came from you, and we'll pay you hundred grand. Now, I exposed that in 2004. And now that's coming out that all the major boards pushing all the vaccines, they're all on the payroll, but they're not making a hundred grand now. Some of these guys are making a half mil a year just to sit there and say you need this. And, and it doesn't include the, the secret stock options and the warrants they're getting as well. So that's why I've been pushing, and that's why the Federal Trade Commission, which does a pretty good job in the media saying Kevin Trudeau's a snake oil salesman, he's a convicted felon, 
well, you know, what snake oil am I selling? I'm not selling Vioxx. That seems like snake oil. Well, they're trying to discredit you because I remember, you've been doing this so long, I remember in, when I was a senior in high school and then in college, I'd be sitting around in the dorm watching you. I remember you talking about Redlin on TV. And, and going back through my memory, you're one of the first people that really woke me up to that. And now they admit it shrinks the children's brains, mm -hmm. causes their heart to swell, retards growth, retards uh, their psychological development, their mental development. Everybody knows Ritalin's bad now, and it was really Kevin Trudeau. I was one of the first guys out there, and you talk a lot about fluoride in the water. I talk about fluoride in the water. We talk about the genetically modified food, how it caused illnesses and disease, the antibiotics in meat and dairy, the bovine growth hormone in meat and dairy. You know, why do we have such obesity in America? The report came, came out two days ago that said in the next seven years, over 50% of Americans are going to be not just fat or overweight, obese.